Tonight, more on the death of Senator Dianne Feinstein. The news of the 90-year-old Feinstein's death comes after a series of health problems and questions about her condition. Just last year, she announced she would retire at the end of her term in 2024. Feinstein was California's first woman senator, and during her decades on Capitol Hill, she made important inroads on issues ranging from gun control to the CIA's interrogation tactics. Feinstein was also the first female on the Senate Judiciary Committee. And here's a live look at the state capitol as the state and the country mourn Senator Feinstein's passing. KCAL News reporter Tom Waite has a look back at her life and legacy. Well, I don't think the board has really done their homework when it comes to taxation. Diane Feinstein's storied political career began in San Francisco in 1969 when she was elected to the city's board of supervisors. Feinstein would ultimately become the first woman to serve as the board's president. Hi, Tom. Hi, I'm Diane. Nice to know you. It would be one of many firsts for Feinstein. In 1992, she made history, becoming the first woman to represent California in the U.S. Senate. In that same year, she would help Barbara Boxer win the state's other Senate seat in what would become known as the Year of the Woman, setting up this iconic moment. I will never forget the night we made history. Uh, we were at the Fairmont Hotel waiting to see what would happen, and Diane was a shoe in and I was certainly uh, absolutely the underdog. Retired Senator Barbara Boxer would serve with Feinstein until the end of Boxer's term in 2017. When the two of us made it, two women from the Bay Area, two Jewish women from the Bay Area, it was such history. Boxer says they knew because of their gender, they had to fight even harder. These guys thought women couldn't understand, you know, the gun issues, couldn't understand missile issues, couldn't understand defense issues. While Feinstein's time in the Senate has more recently defined her epic career. What are your thoughts on what it means for our country to have women serve in meaningful numbers on the federal bench. It was before her time in Washington that she was tested by violence and tragedy. In 1978, as a San Francisco supervisor, she was there when the city's mayor and a trailblazing city supervisor were assassinated by another supervisor. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. A steely Feinstein would guide and calm a shattered city. I became mayor as a product of assassination, of the mayor being killed and the first openly gay public official being killed by a friend and colleague of mine. She's iconic uh, for that moment, uh, for showing that women could lead. She's been that way the whole time, I think, just very, very, very calm and very measured. Feinstein would take over as San Francisco's mayor, the first woman to hold the post. She would then win the job twice in two elections. While she was mayor, she earmarked more money for AIDS research in San Francisco than President Reagan did for the entire country. Feinstein would make an unsuccessful run for governor in 1990, but even in defeat, she was resilient and went on to become California's first female U.S. Senator in 1992. Electing women senators was a big deal. Uh, and in 1992, we elected two women senators at the same time. And that's also going to be a very important part of her legacy. Just eight months after she was sworn in, Senator Feinstein would have to contend with a mass shooting in San Francisco at a law firm in the heart of the city. Eight people were killed, six wounded. Feinstein would immediately start working on an assault weapons ban. A law firm secure on the 31st floor of a high-rise building. A disgruntled client walks in and just mows down employees. We got hit 101 California in the 90s. As soon as both of us got to the Senate, um, she took the lead on the assault weapons ban and, and Joe Biden was the chairman of judiciary and he told her, you know, I'm not doing it unless you get the votes. Feinstein would get those votes and a 10 year assault weapons ban and it passed in 1994. It was allowed to expire in 2004. Senator She's Obama fought hard to reinstate the ban, but Republicans have stood firmly against it. We're always going to think of Dianne Feinstein in the context of the gun control issue. In her last election in 2018, she went up against then-State Senate President Kevin DeLeon.
California's Democratic Party threw their support behind De Leon, who is the more progressive candidate, but Feinstein would still defeat him. Progressives were dissatisfied with her practical orientation. Dianne Feinstein always made a point of working with Republicans to get things done. They were unhappy about that. In March of 2022, Dianne Feinstein would lose her husband, 86-year-old Richard Bloom, a crushing loss. I called her and we talked and um, she said to me, Barbara, I didn't know how much my life would change, my world would change, how much I depended on him and cared about him. And she was really suffering from that loss. With the loss of her husband, coupled with talk of recent cognitive issues, at 89, Feinstein announced her retirement in February 2023. My husband has died, and that affected the decision. When her retirement was announced, Feinstein's colleagues began her send-off with effusive praise, words fit for a woman who changed the course of history. It would be impossible to write the history of California politics. It'd be impossible to write the history of American politics without acknowledging the trailblazing career of Senator Dianne Feinstein. She was a shoe in she was going to make it. And she could have easily turned her back and walked away from me and said, you know, you're on your own, kiddo. But she never did that. And for, to this day, I, that's my fondest memory of her is being by my side. Feinstein offered this advice to young women who want to follow in her footsteps. Prepare yourself. And so many times, talented young women go for the top first. You can't do that. Start young. Earn your spurs. Tom Waite, KCAL News. Senator Feinstein's death creates a vacancy in the Senate at a time when Democrats hold the slightest majority. Governor Gavin Newsom is expected to pick a replacement soon. That person would serve until January 2025. Voters will go to the polls in November of 2024 to pick California's next senator, serving the full six-year term. Newsom has said previously he would appoint a black woman to fill her seat. And we'll have more reflections on the life and work of Senator Dianne Feinstein throughout the night here on KKL News. And you can find more on the Senator on KKLNews.com as our coverage continues.